Artur Makarov, a prolific inside puller that we don't talk nearly enough about, and yes, that was Irakli Zirakashvili he was catching in the second clip. I mean, just look at that right arm. That is a heavyweight arm on a light to middleweight body. In this video, I want to give him the recognition he deserves and take a look at how he does this nasty low dragging hook. And let's start with this clip right here because one of the things that makes Artur so good is he is a master of the elbow pad real estate. Watch what he does with his elbow the second this match starts. This is going to be in slow motion, by the way. We start and right to the back of the pad. He uses every single inch. Keep in mind, this is a WAF tournament, so they will call you if a millimeter of your elbow is off the pad. So as soon as it starts, let's watch that one more time. You're gonna see him drag to the back of the pad, bringing the match to his side of the table, and he brings his shoulder forward to get very tight and connected. I mean, look at this position right here. He could not be any closer to his hand. And look at his opponent, Alan freaking Zolowev, by the way. He's at the front of his pad and he's starting to lose his pronation, turning palm up, and that's going to shut off his hammer curl strength. And let me explain why that's so important. Your brachialis on the right is actually more responsible for elbow flexion than even your biceps. And then the brachioradialis in the middle also helps with elbow flexion. And as soon as you turn someone palm up, you make that brachioradialis muscle in the middle less active and you can actually feel it. I'll try to do this so you guys can see. If I have my pronation intact, right, I'm not palm up. You can see my brachioradialis, it's firm, it's strong, it's working for me. As soon as my palm gets turned up, it's gone, it's mush. Pronated again, there it is, popping out, it's firm, and palm up, where'd it go? Here's another great example where you'll see Arthur, of course, drag, but then also chop and clamp down with his bottom fingers to get Arachli completely palm up. Check this out. Look at Arachli's position here. Nobody's coming back from that. Completely open, totally palm up, relying just on his biceps in a terrible position to be relying on your biceps in. And indeed, he does finish the match from there. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe. I put out as much content as I can for you guys, and that's a great and free way to support me. All right, back to Arthur. Here it is again in a different round from the other side. Match starts. We see Arthur shooting, clamp down, relying on those bottom fingers, which is where you want to contain from, by the way. Although this time he doesn't get a rackly palm up like he wants, and that allows Irakli to use his elbow flexion to its maximum potential and doesn't let Arthur get him down to the pin pad. Here's another round where we can see Arthur execute his full move. The match starts, clamps in, drags back, and you'll notice he actually adds in a bit of pronation at the end to attack Irakli's hand. One of the benefits to attacking further out on the arm is this. Imagine this seesaw is Irakli's arm. His wrist would be right here, and then further out at the very end is his hand, and you want to get that arm to the pin pad down at the bottom. Well, if you're applying all the force right here, you're going to have less success in getting to the pin pad than if you were to apply it all the way out here. So when you're trying to bring someone's arm down, just think of levers, right? The further out you are, the further away from the fulcrum you are, the better chance you are going to have of bringing that arm down to the pin pad. And that's why the dad move is so impressive. You're applying force all the way down here, close to the fulcrum, that thing in the middle, and that's going to be harder to get the arm down, harder than doing it from the wrist, which is harder than doing it from all the way out in the hand. Now, obviously that's an overly reductive way to look at arm wrestling, but it's important to keep the physics in mind. Beyond that, sometimes just switching up your angle of attack can catch your opponent off guard and get you the win. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about one of my favorite matches of all time, Artur Makarov versus Engin Terzi. Now you'll see Artur go for that drag, but he's going to lose his hand in the process because Engin Terzi. And now this is one of those times where you just have to be stupid strong. Arthur's going to sit there as Engen hits and hits and hits. And because Arthur has such strong elbow flexion, I mean, look, look at his forearm to bicep. It doesn't really open at all because he's just so strong. And at the end of the day, arm wrestling is a strength sport. And this is why people say that the strap totally changes arm wrestling, because even though Engen has cracked Arthur's wrist here, you can see that the strap going around the base of Arthur's wrist allows Arthur to continue to use his hammer curl strength, his elbow flexion, to keep his arm from going any lower, even though his hand is compromised. Oh, and by the way, watch Arthur's elbow right after Engen hits. Here comes the hit and the drag. Did you catch that? Let's watch it one more time. 
So Engen's gonna hit, and then as soon as he comes up, Arthur gains just an extra inch to give him a little bit more of an advantage. And now again, to finish, you're gonna see him switch up the angle of attack and go outside while also using that elbow pad to drag to get a ton of extra force with it. Now I mentioned this is one of my favorite matches of all time, and I don't wanna spoil anything, but if you guys can see the score, it is now 2-2. Engen brings it back to a sudden death round, and I'll leave a link in the description. You gotta check it out. I think this kid in the background biting eight of his fingernails at the same time sums it up pretty well. Now, you keep hearing me talk about how much Arthur drags with his hook, and I can't stress this enough. Next time you're at the gym, see how much weight you can row with one arm, and compare that to how much weight you can bicep curl with it. It's night and day. You have to use your back in arm wrestling. So to sum it up, you're gonna see Arthur grab a little bit lower, getting that pinky into that wrist joint, start with a big drag while he chops and clamps down with those bottom fingers, then add a little bit of outside force to finish. Here it is again from the other side. Arthur even misses the start here a bit, but he still drags and clamps in with those bottom fingers, getting his opponent completely palm up, actually slides his elbow forward right there to set up for his next big hit, where he drags it back, adds a little bit of outside force, and you can see the opponent's elbow Elbow even came off the pad. That's how much backward force Artur is applying. Let me know in the comments how you feel about Artur Makarov and who you'd like to see me do one of these how-to videos on next. I hope you guys liked this one. If you did, drag hook that like button and subscribe to catch all my future content. I put out multiple new videos every week and I will see you in the next one.